It's time for Qingming Jie or the Qingming Festival, one of the most important festivals in China. It's a day upon which people pay respects to their ancestors, but they also usher in the start of spring. How do they do that? Well, they eat a number of lovely foods, and they also do something called ta qing, which means tread on the green, and it goes a little bit like this. Doing a I'm, uh, you know, ta qing. The food most commonly associated with Qingmingjie, Qingtuan. Now the Qing is a different character. This Qing means green, green glutinous rice balls. The green obviously represents the blossoming spring. And the green colour comes from something called Ai Cao, or wormwood, which I'm not quite sure what it is, but according to the dictionary, it's a bitter aromatic shrub. So there we go. Now, these are very popular in the south, in Zhejiang, Shanghai, Jiangsu. In the north, not so much, apart from during this period of time, around this festival. Anyway, they've got a history dating back some 2,000 years. I'm going to start off with one of the traditional flavours, Doucha. doesn't have much of a scent. Because Qingming Festival is closely related to the Cold Food Festival, and Shijie, these are cold. You don't have to cook them. So. Very sticky. It's somewhere between the sweet and the savoury. As you know, I do like dolsha because I always think it's chocolate and then it isn't. Young people these days don't really know how to make these, but go back 50 years and everyone, or oh, well, I guess everyone, pretty much knew how to make them in their homes. Uh, now you have to buy them from the shop. On the advert, they look great, they look brilliant, but when you're actually pulling them out and putting them on the leaves, it's, you know, it's a bit sticky. It tastes nice though. Put that over there. But we've got more than just the dosha. I'll come back to that later. I'll have that a little bit later. We've got a modern filling to the Qing Tuan, and that is Mo Cha or green tea, obviously, because it's green. So let's see what this tastes like. Hopefully a bit sweeter. Mm. Hold on. That looks like dosha again. Seriously, check that out. Oh, sorry. So the um, traditional flavour was made of Ai Tao or wormwood, and, and the outside of this one is made of more char. To be honest, they taste quite similar. I'm getting in a bit of a sticky mess at the moment, but I'll continue as if no, none of this ever happened. On to the next round of Qing Tuan. They're a little bit like mooncakes because you can get so many fillings. So up next we've got Mango, which is mango, and we've got Daohong Rou Song, or egg yolk and meat floss. Anyway, I've heard that that one is quite popular online. It's something of a Wang Hong, like an internet celebrity like me. We sell me. No, not like me. Anyway, um, this one's quite expensive. In fact, they're all fairly expensive. They're about five kwai per ting tuan. Have a look side by side. You can see they don't quite look the same, do they? The mango ting tuan look perfect. The egg yolk and meat floss don't. Let's try the mango. It's not so sticky, this one. It's good. Mm, that is lovely and sweet. You can see the yellow mango filling. Oh, it's very refreshing. It's as if spring is blossoming in my mouth. Mm. Still a bit sticky. Mm, sticky in your throat. However, this is much better than any mooncake I've ever had. And moving on to egg yolk and meat floss. Mmm. I can hardly contain my excitement. This one's a lot stickier. <coughs> Let's pull it off the leaf. Oh no. Oh no, I can already see what the feeling looks like. Okay, here it goes. If you've never had meat floss before, mm, it's like sweet meat. Oh, that's horrible. I've got to spit it out, sorry. So there we go, they were both great, both great. I'm going to stick with the mango flavour. You can keep your um, egg yolk and meat floss. I'll, I'll just stick with this. So our last Qing Tuan is a bit of a treat. Now, international viewers, you might just think that all these foods that I eat are sweet, and our Chinese viewers, 南方人经常说我从不吃肉下的东西。
Well, this is meat. It has meat filling. It's actually Dong Sun Shao Ro, or winter bamboo and red fried pork. Um, one of my favourite types of meat. Okay, here we go. Tastes a bit like a dumpling. Not really like Ching Tuan. Um, as to be expected with a, a meat filling. Unfortunately, we made these in the microwave, so the outside is a little bit hard. If you steam them, it'd be much more appetising. Oh, oh. Okay, sticky. So up next we've got ayet saba. Now saba is quite a common thing. It's eaten in the south, it's quite popular. In the north, not so much. I've never come across it. But during Timing, you can obviously buy it. Now, the way to make this is you fry it. And it's meant to be quite easy. You just pop it in, you turn it over on both sides, and when it goes a little orange, then it's done. But the first time I tried it, I failed. Oh, oh, oh no, is that okay? Oh God, is that okay? But the second time, it was much better. And it, and it was perfect. And as you can see, here, here, here they are um, in all their glory. So let's check out what the ayet haba tastes like. Now here we've got hong kang and hang gui hua. So that's red sugar and sweet osmanthus, which I guess adds to the sweetness. Right, let's try some uh, red sugar. It's a very sticky. It's also really sweet. Maybe that's just the, the red sugar. Mm. It's got almost a nutty flavour. Let's try the osmanthus. It takes a while to chew. Whoa. Here we go. And the osmanthus is definitely a little bit more bitter. You can't really taste the, the aital, the wormwood. This isn't bitter itself. This doesn't really have much of a flavour, I guess. They're just really sticky and really greasy. I bet my lips look good. Suba are usually a round and the roundness symbolises family unity. As you can see, these aren't round, but I do have some round ones. Right here, this is also taba, a kind of taba cake. You steam this one, uh, which is what I did, and then I took the top off and I, I also failed. But anyway, let's give it a go. It's quite hard. It's, it's gone back to a solid form. Oh God, it seems quite hard to get out. I need to leave it that up. I don't think I did very well in in uh, in cooking it to be honest. Or steaming it as I should have. It's good for working out though. Oh I feel that burn. Oh yes! There's a little bit of a, a language joke for you because the next food we're looking at is O or lotus root. Now it's one of two foods eaten during the Qingming Festival um, related to silkworm cultivation. The second food we're going to look at shortly, but first it's o. Now the o itself of the lotus root looks a little bit like meat. It's not, um, it's not obviously, but inside the lotus root you've got nor meat or a glutinous rice. Um, now let's, let's try a bit. Once I've eaten this I'll tell you why it's linked to silkworm cultivation. It's slightly sweet. It's not very sticky considering it's got glutinous rice. It tastes healthy, very healthy. Now, the reason why it's linked to silkworm cultivation is because when you cut it, you get these little sinews in between the slices. And those sinews look a little bit like the silk created by a silkworm. So when you eat the lotus root, you're kind of hoping for a good year's production of silk. But that's not the only way that you can enjoy a lotus root, because you can also drink it. And that's called ofen or lotus root powder. You just add hot water. we have got some of that here. All firm, ready, and, uh, and mixed in hot water. Um, it's the first time I've ever tried this. It looks a little bit like watered down milk, or maybe a little bit like doujiang. Um, anyway, uh, nothing for it, I'll, I'll give it a try. To be honest, there's no flavor. So I guess you're just drinking it with the hope that um, your silkworm will do good in the next year. Although I might be needing this for the next food I have to eat because uh, something tells me that I'm going to need to wash my mouth out. And the final Qingming food that we're looking at, it's also closely related to silkworm cultivation, is Qingming snails, or Qingming luo si, or Tian luo. I've never eaten snails before, so this is going to be an interesting um, thing. Uh, they're, they're, they're in spicy sauce. They, um, they're not that big. They're spiral-shelled snails. 
Uh, you use a toothpick to pull it out. Um, so anyway, let's give it a go. I'm not, I'm not too excited about this, but... Mm. Doesn't look the most appetizing thing I've ever eaten. A bit crunchy and slimy and chewy all at the same time but spicy so it's okay I can actually see there's more entrails there that's not very nice some people when they've finished they throw the shells onto the rooftop there's two reasons for that the empty the empty shells go onto the rooftop and other critters and other little bugs live in the shells and don't eat the silkworms so that's one reason and the other reason uh, the sound of the shells hitting the rooftops scares away mice so once I've finished all these, that's what I'm going to go do. I've also heard that some people don't need to use the toothpicks to eat the snails. Oh, come on. Oh, that doesn't look good. Or, or I know for a fact that my cameraman is one of those people, so come on, come on. I'm going to... It's pretty fast. Are you hungry? All right. So there we go. Uh, so I'm going to eat the rest, and uh, there's not much left actually. Uh, just eat a few of these. And, oh my! Look at that. Am I going to eat all of that? Yes, sir. Oh yes, oh yes. It's got my it's got a lovely thumbprint in it. Mmm, <laughs> traditional.